Mechanical keyboards have been making a resurgence in the past several years. My first was a Thermaltake Poseidon Z with KO Blue switches. After that, I wanted to save some desk space, so I moved to a Cooler Master Quickfire TK, which is the predecessor to the Master Keys Pro M. I was content with this setup for a while. I didn't really know the appeal for these keyboards other than the fact that they were somehow good for gaming. From time to time, the mechanical keyboard subreddit would reach the front page of Reddit with one of their tiny little keyboards and I would always think it was silly to have no arrows and was generally confused about the community. I don't know what the occasion was, but one day I decided to subscribe to the community and after a cursory survey of recommendations for newcomers, I settled on getting an Obins and Pro. Fast forward a couple weeks shipping from China and I had my first 60% keyboard. I was immediately impressed with the lighting, as it was my first RGB board, and just the overall compactness really appealed to me. Using it was another story though. At this point, I knew enough to move the function keys to caps lock so I can use the layers easily, but coming from what's effectively a full-sized keyboard, this was a hard concept to grasp. It was only after a summer break when I had no choice but to use the N-Pro for everything that I got really used to it. During this time, I had been getting further and further into the hobby, buying aftermarket keycap sets and such, and eventually building my own 60%. And I think this keyboard had a lot to do with that. If you listen around the community, you'll find that there are a lot of others like me. For many, the Anpro was their first quote-unquote real mechanical keyboard. I guess the primary appeal is all of the features that it packs for a great price. It's got per-key RGB lighting, Bluetooth connectivity, and programmability all for a price of somewhere between $50 and $80. I think this has been a sort of a generational shift as people entering the hobby a couple more years ago would have had the Vortex Poker 3 as their gateway board. Personally, I think the Anpro is right in taking the poker's place as the entry level board, primarily due to its value. It's been a long time since I made the purchase, so I don't have anything except the board, but I remember that it came in a pretty basic box with a keycap puller, a Bluetooth dongle, and a cable. It's available in a couple different colors with the common Gatoron switches. I think the Ann Pro looks pretty good. The case has sort of a tessellated design, which is reminiscent of recent NVIDIA graphics cards, and the branding is on the bottom where it won't be seen. Also in the bottom is just some rubber feet, and I think the angle that it comes with is already pretty aggressive, so flip up feet aren't required. There isn't really anything about the outside that screams gamer. It's pretty understated, and I really appreciate that. The OEM profile on the keycaps complements the side profile of the case, and the white painted backplate reflects the RGB lighting, which makes it more vibrant. The construction on the board is surprisingly good. The case, while plastic, is fairly rigid and has a surface finish that doesn't seem like it'll damage too easily. At around one pound and five ounces, it doesn't compare to anything with an aluminum build, but it doesn't feel cheap either. The keycaps are double shot shine through PBT, and while pretty thin, they're not as bad as stock ones found in mainstream gaming keyboards. Like with other implementations, they had to choose a font that separates loops and characters, which makes them a bit gamery, but it isn't too bad. The plate is steel, and the keyboard assembly mounts the plate onto the case with some screws. Note that the Ampro is not 100% compatible with aftermarket cases because of the screw locations. You'll only be able to secure two of the screw down points, but people reported that it feels secure enough. You can get into the keyboard by just removing these screws and lifting up you'll find the regular keyboard assembly whose PCB is attached to a battery. A common issue with earlier iterations of the Anpro was that the solder joints were puncturing the battery, but they added this piece of foam which resolves the issue. Other than that, there isn't anything too special here. You'll probably notice the terrible solder joints on these, but that's my doing. It was fine from the factory, but more on that later. These have Gatoron brown switches, and at some point I removed them and lubed the sliders with EK lube, so the sound won't really be anything like a stock board, but here it is anyway.
So these are pretty good to type on. These stabilizers aren't perfect, but they aren't terrible either. I find the bottom out feel to be somewhat sedated, perhaps from the damping from the relatively dense plastic case, and the subtle tactility of Gateron Browns feel pretty good. I think the main focus of this board wasn't really about the board at all. For me, this was just a platform to get a preview of what the greater hobby has to offer. I can't speak for everyone, but I enjoy creating and improving upon physical things that I can use every day, and the Ant Pro is a perfect example of that. Because it's so small, desoldering switches isn't a monumental task, and because it's relatively cheap, you wouldn't feel too guilty if you were to break it. The stock stabilizers are fine, but have room for improvement, which is just another opportunity to learn firsthand the things you can do to your keyboard. There are issues like laggy Bluetooth connections and fiddly controls, but I think if the AND Pro was perfect, I might not have gotten into this hobby as far as I did. When you buy an AND Pro, you aren't just buying a keyboard, you're also buying a learning opportunity. By doing simple things like trying out aftermarket keycaps or lubing the stabilizers and the switches, you're fleshing out your base of knowledge in the hobby and exploring spaces that you might not have realized existed. By being offered so many features like RGB, Bluetooth, programmability among others, you're able to try them all out in a single product and decide which ones you really like and which ones you can go without. For me, this was the keyboard that helped me realize how much I didn't care about lighting or Bluetooth, but it also helped me understand the appeal of small and programmable boards. Think of the N Pro as sort of a switch tester for a lot of features available on a bunch of different keyboards, and it'll be even more useful to you. Even if you don't consider it as just a stepping stone to something greater, it's still a great deal. This has been said a thousand times before, but I recommend the N Pro for anyone looking to get their first real mechanical keyboard. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it and subscribe for more.